I want to figure out what these closed labs, OpenAI, Anthropic, DeepMind, XAI do behind closed doors. And this is probably what they are doing. One thing that they probably do is they analyze bytes in text images and they want to discover structures in bytes. So in the future, they can train language models and other AI models on bytes directly. All of the data and information in digital world is represented with bytes. So you can learn a lot more with bytes. You can do a lot more with bytes. Currently, byte sequences are too long for transformer because transformer scales quadratically with length. So they compress bytes into tokens. But the future is in raw bytes. You see, byte data can take all different files like audio, video, images, text, and generate those files as well. Beyond language models, byte models are digital world simulators, a comprehensive analysis. So world simulator means it has all of the information, can predict everything. You can code not in programming language, but in raw bytes. It can build software from scratch with just bytes. It can render UI di directly onto your screen without using programming languages, just by writing bytes. It can do science with pure bytes. And this is the paper that we will check right now. This groundbreaking paper introduces BGPT, Byte GPT a revolutionary deep learning model that operates directly on raw binary data at the byte level, rather than traditional tokenized text or processed media formats. The model demonstrates the ability to simulate digital systems, process multiple data modalities, and even replicate CPU operations with near perfect accuracy. The problem with current deep learning, traditional deep learning models have a significant limitations. They focus on human interpretable data, text, image, audio. They require modality specific uh, pre-processing and tokenization. They overlook the fundamental digital reality. Everything in computers is bytes. The byte level solution, BGPT, addresses these limitations by working directly with bytes, the atomic unit of digital information, unifying all modalities into a single framework, simulating digital processes at their most fundamental level. And it's finding the patterns in digital world, digital processes in its most fundamental level. Key insight, by training on byte sequences, BGPT can learn patterns of digital systems, enabling it to predict, simulate, and diagnose algorithm and hardware behavior. Key innovations, native binary processing, direct interpretation and manipulation of binary data, no need for format-specific pre-processing, ability to work with any digital file type, unified modeling framework, single model for text, audio, images, and binary data, simplifies integration of various data sources. We want to figure out bytes because then we can take raw bytes and generate raw bytes, generate video, generate text, generate audio, generate everything. And generated speech can have a lot more emotion in it, can be a lot more similar to what uh, people, how people talk, because it's not compressed into tokens, it's not changed into anything. Raw bytes. Enables cross modal knowledge transfer. So everything is learned in a single latent space. It's not one latent space for text, one for images, and then they cannot cross learn and come up with like new patterns. Digital system simulation can simulate algorithm execution. For example, music format conversion, replicates hardware behavior, CPU state modeling. So here you can just give it song. It can simulate, it can use a neural network to just convert those bytes into the other bytes that are gonna that are same as if you run it through the conversion model and potential for reverse engineering binary formats. The only problem we have with bytes is the sequences are too long. Quadratic scaling sequences too long. Quadratic scaling with attention mechanism in transformer. But once we figure out bytes, we'll probably figure out the entire uh, digital world, self-recursive, self-improving AI, everything. So let's see the architecture of BGPT. Hierarchical transformer design. BGPT uses a clever hierarchical architecture to handle long byte sequences efficiently. Byte sequence into patches, patch level processing, byte level reconstruction. 
this is the confusing part. I'm not sure how exactly we should process this. Should it be in patches? Should we have attention over every byte? Should we have some other architecture than attention and transformer, which we probably should. But attention keeps performance as it scales. So that's the difference between it and other architectures. I feel like attention works because every piece of data you add, it's gonna interact with all of the other data. So when you add piece of data, you don't have linear increase in interactions or necessary compute. You have exponential or quadratic. So attention also scales quadratically with every piece of data. So it's matching the necessary compute for this piece of data to interact with every other piece. But not every interaction is necessary there. So maybe we can train a neural network that's going to approximate attention. Crazy idea, let's go. What about that? A neural network that maybe grows linearly but approximates attention. That is, it only finds necessary interactions in attention. But the more complex data, the more complex or the more compute will this approximation have or need. Those are interesting questions to look at. I'm going to look into that, make some videos. Architecture of this BGPT, linear projection layer, converts patches of bytes into dense embeddings. Okay. Each patch contains 16 bytes, uses one hot encoding, 257 dimensions, so 256 bytes and end of token, end of patch token. It's okay, the problem, we are still grouping into 16 bytes. This is same as tokenizing. Or maybe it's not, but we are in tokens, we are also just grouping bytes. Let's see, patch level decoder. A process sequence of patch embeddings. Predict features of subsequent patches. Uses autoregressive transformer architecture. Okay, I somewhat get it. Let's see, we'll understand it. Byte level decoder. Reconstructs individual uh, bytes with, within patches. I understand, I understand. So this patch level decoder, this is your, this is your standard language model. It has embedding predicts the next embedding, just like in tokens, does the same thing. These are just groups of bytes that are equal size, and tokens are groups of bytes of varying size, they, based on how often they appear in language. But it's the same thing. And every vector, and every group of bytes, either in tokens or here, which is always 16, gets converted into a vector embedding. And that vector embedding is always same in this decoder-only transformer. And we also have byte level decoder that's gonna convert our uh, patch embedding into just sequence of actual bytes. This is similar with byte latent transformer. And I feel like byte latent transformer is the next version of this. And byte latent transformer just tries to group bytes better, make better tokens than the current tokenizer tokenizers but I still don't see how that's specific to bytes. We are still doing the same thing as tokenizing. I imagine we need to have a model where in attention mechanism, we just do attention across every single byte. So that would be raw bytes. Or if we surpass, which we need to surpass attention mechanism, then process every single byte separately. That means injecting raw bytes. Here we are still using kind of tokens. But are there some patterns in byte data that will let us somehow group bytes? That's the question. And should we group bytes? Or how should we process them, even if there are patterns? But there is one difference in NGPT versus classic tokenization. Uh, here they are merging 16 bytes, but those could be any 16 bytes and there is a lot more possible combinations than in just tokenizers. So we have huge number of possible combinations. This is uh, 38 zeros after this number three. So here, the language model would learn to recognize patterns in byte combinations because it will see a, a lot less patterns than all of the all of the bytes. But language and images they have patterns with their bytes. They are not. Um, they are not just random bytes. So there will be like a very small subset of these that will ever appear. And most of this will never appear. 
in any language, in any image, video, it's not even possible. I mean, it is possible to generate random data, random noise, but it, there is no meaning behind it. So only a small subset of 16 uh, bytes have meaning. But the advantage of this over tokenizer is this can learn everything, audio, video, image, text. Tokenizer is just for text, the text tokenizer, or image tokenizer just for images. So this does uh, create a universal representation, representative space. So the advantages is you have a unified thing to unify all of the knowledge from text, image, video, but you have a lot longer uh, sequences for your transformer, which is not going to work, as well as current tokenizers. I got some different interesting paper. I don't know how useful. Let's see. So we are understanding the inner product and the tension mechanism of neural networks. The paper makes three major theoretical contributions. Symmetric relations, inner products of neural networks with itself can approximate any symmetric positive defined kernel. Not sure exactly what this means. Asymmetric relations, inner products of two different neural networks can approximate any continuous relation function. We'll understand later what this means. And attention analysis. Attention mechanism in transformers can approximate any retrieval mechanism based on relevance ordering. Retrieval mechanism based on relevance ordering. So we have information. We're going to get information we need from that bunch of information and order them by relevance. So that's what attention is. This makes perfect sense. So attention mechanism is blending information from different tokens. So it's just taking 10% of this token, 2% of this, 15% of this token into a single vector embedding. So attention gets information from the current context and the feed forward network will convert that information to the next token. No, it will not. That's what output head does. The feed forward is just going to take all of these vectors, all of these tokens with blended context and just convert them somehow so that that context is not just added. It's also it's actually somehow converted or manipulated into the new token with new information. So key and query multiplied in attention. They're going to point to the most relevant information for that token. How can we make this not quadratic? We need to do research on that, but what do we do? What do we research even? Let's say I have a byte transformer that is trained to predict next letter or next byte in Shakespeare text. I want to, this is any text. I want to research attention mechanism to understand it and to overcome or surpass it. I know attention is for info retrieval and blending. So it's going to retrieve and blend information to the current vector embedding. It's going to blend other vector embeddings, parts of them to the current by just adding them. And attention will figure out which vectors are most relevant. So, and how much of information it should blend. Um, what are the things I should research in order to understand how it works and to overcome it? Act, act as a research mentor, supervisor, professor. That's what I told to 4.1 Opus. We got some research roadmap. Phase one, deep understanding month one to two. So this is a good idea. I didn't know about this paper. Attention is not not explanation. So this goes studies attention mechanism. A mathematical framework for transformer circuits. Bianthropic. I'm going to do this in the next video. So I'm going to link below. I hope I remember to link it below. I'm tired now. So I can scroll through this if you want to check. But there is just code here. OK, you can pause if you want. I think this uh, this Pyanthropic should be read definitely. I'm going to read that in the next video. OK. This is so long. Okay, that's it. Thank you for watching. Check out my other videos and uh, see you next time.